Hi, in this tutorial we're gonna create some animated graphics like these that you can use as overlays for your videos. Okay, so I think we're done with the setup of all of our objects. Now we can go into shading some more because of course we want our YouTube logo on here. All right, let's create the, the shader for our YouTube button. So we can go over to the shading tab, again look through the camera maybe, switch off the overlay, switch over to rendered mode so we can actually see our cycles render, select this uh, logo object and now we create a new material and with this material selected we can hit control or with the principled PSDF selected I hit control T which automatically puts in some nodes for me to map an image onto my object. So it creates a texture coordinate node which uses the UV a mapping node which we actually don't need so I can remove it. I select it and hit Control X which removes it but keeps the connection here. And then here is the actual image and I will open the YouTube logo. So here I have all the logos, I use the YouTube button and we already have something. It doesn't look very good yet and that is because we didn't do any UV mapping yet. So let's go to the UV editing workspace. Um, I'm in this object here, my logo object, and if I'm in edit mode and I select everything by hitting A on the keyboard, select all the vertices, I can see over here my 2D image, and this is where we do our UV mapping. So what is UV mapping? I have a small little video here on my channel, it's pretty old by now, but uh, of course still valid. UV mapping basically means that each point, each vertex of our 3D object in 3D space has a mapped position in a 2D space for an image. So if we select, for example, this face, you can see it's mapped to this area in the image. And this face is mapped to this area. And if I select all of them, I can see the entire mapping. Now, of course, this doesn't make sense because this is almost like a square here, and it's mapped to fit the entire YouTube logo, which is not a square, it's a rectangle. And that's not what really what we want. We want our squircle shape that we created to be mapped to this logo. And that's really very easy to do. You just hit A to select all of the vertices in your in edit mode on your object. And then you hit U to go to the UV mapping menu. And we just select project from view. And now you can see we have our squircle shape in here. Now if I set this over to a material preview, you can see now this square, for example, this square here is mapped to this pointy bit here of the white triangle and we have the YouTube logo on here. Now we can go in here, also hit A to select everything and then use S for scaling, G for moving. I'm just gonna scale it up to make it look maybe like this, to make it look like a YouTube play button. Now if we had a different logo in here, it might not be rectangular, we have to do the same thing again. We UV, uh, we project from view, so we get the squircle shape in our UV map, and then we just place this wherever we need it and scale it so that we have our logo nicely in our squircle shape. Okay, so this is 3D space, this is 2D space, and that is basically what UV mapping is. This we unwrapped it so that our logo sits nicely on there. And again, it looks 2D on a 3D object because we're, we're mapping our uh, view, which was the top view. We projected that view, project from view, onto our UV map. Cool, now we have a logo. So it looks like this now. Now we can go to the material here, material setting and play with this a little, maybe bring down the roughness to make it a little bit more shiny. What's good? Maybe 0.25, okay. If you like, you can join these amazing people over at patreon.com slash chrisp to support my free tutorials. As a silver tier patron, you can download all of the blend files of all of my tutorials. And as a gold tier patron, you get access to all of my material packs, even the recently published new 3D printed shader for Blender 4. Thank you, patrons. Next, we want some animation. So let me go into top view 
and I'm just going to hide text. Text is good. Plain. Plain would be our background, right? And then we have pill and text. Let's just hide that for a second. So we just have our logo to work with. So the let's jump into animations. We can bring this up and we can split this view. We can have a little timeline down here and I'm going to go into the graph editor in here because the graph editor lets us look at the interpolation between the keyframes. So what are we doing here? Well, let's say we want a 70 frames animation if we are set to 30 frames a second. This doesn't really make a difference now, but I'm going to set it to 30 frames a second. Okay, we can zoom in here. Now on frame 10, we want this button to be in the middle and about this size. Yeah, no, looks pretty cool. So on frame 10, I'm going to go to the object properties here and I'm going to insert a keyframe for the scale. And you just do that by hovering your mouse over here and hitting I on the keyboard. That inserted this keyframe here. It has a handle on the left and the right, but this is the actual keyframe. So I'm telling Blender, on frame 10, I want this object to be this size. And on frame one, I'm gonna scale this down to zero and hit I again. And now I'm telling Blender, on frame zero, the size should be zero, so invisible. And on frame, and then this, these are the frames, and on frame 10, we are back to the size that we defined uh, for frame 10, right? So here we can see how that works. Now, this curve in here, this is like it accelerates, goes fast, and then it slows down. That will be the interpolation between the keyframes. And that's what the animation software, in our case Blender, takes care for us. So we don't have to do every single frame, we just define keyframes, and then everything in between is done for us using the uh, interpolation. This would be like a soft interpolation, ease in and ease out. However, we want this to pop in and like overshoot a little bit and bounce back to the final uh, size. And there's actually, we don't even have to do it. We could do this like manually, something like uh, this, and turn this one around to get something like that, right? So this would be like a bounce in and then come back to that. However, we can also just go over here to the interpolation, set this to back, which is just an interpolation type that gives us this sort of curve. Now we've done that for the X scale and our animation looks like this now. We also want to do it for the Y scale. So we select the first and switch it to back. And of course the C scale, select the first frame, uh, keyframe and click on back. Now all three dimensions, X, Y, and C have this cool animation. It pops in, overshoots a little bit and then settles down to the size that we actually want. Okay, so popping in, done. Then after, let's say five frames, we want this guy to move over. So we need an iframe, I mean a keyframe on the X location. Here we did a keyframe for X, Y, and Z. That's why we have these uh, in here in our graph editor. But we're only gonna move on the X, so on frame 15, this is where I want to start moving. I'm gonna hit the right mouse button and insert a single keyframe. Now I'm just using the X, not all three, but just the X. So my X, we can hide the X, Y, C, we're done with that. Uh, for now, now the X location has a keyframe in here on frame 15. Now again, we're gonna move for 10 frames. So on frame 25, we want this object to be moved over here. So we just move it, GX, to where we think it looks good, and hit uh, right mouse button, insert single keyframe. All right, now so we have uh, this animation again. Also here, I want this to use the back animation so that it goes fast, overshoots a little bit, and then goes back to where we want it, okay? So now we have this, it pops in, it moves, 
And here we are. Now we have to make our pill appear. Here's a tip for you. If you don't want to miss any future free tutorials, subscribe to the channel. Okay, so this is going to be fun. Let's enable the pill. Uh, first of all, if I move the pill, the text uh, stays where it is. I want to stick the text to the pill. So I'm gonna move the text over to where it makes sense. Right here where the bevel starts, maybe a little bit over this way. So this is the way I want my pill to look. And I can uh, stick my text to the pill using parenting. So I select the text, then I select the pill holding down shift. So the pill has to be the last thing that I select. This is going to be the parent now. Now hit control P and set parent to object. And as you can see over here now, the text is inside of the pill. And still two different objects. I can still go into the text and edit it. But if I move the pill now, the text moves it with it because it's a child of the pill. Okay, so for our animation, we want the pill to move from our underneath the button to the right to, well, actually basically this position. So maybe a little bit more to the left. So I'm gonna go to frame 25, right on, no, on 25 we're here. And now we want the pill to appear. So let's go 25, uh, 35. That's where we want to be here, or maybe a little bit more to the left. Yeah, like that. And then on my pill object, I'm gonna insert a single keyframe for the X location. And on 25 back here, I'm gonna move GX and hide the pill behind my button. Like maybe so. And I insert single keyframe. So now the YouTube play button settles here and the pill comes out like that. For this, again, I want to use the back animation so that the pill comes out really fast, overshoots a little bit, and then settles in this position. Perfect. However, this pill now, my text, is always visible there. That doesn't look good. How can we get rid of this? How can we hide this? And remember, we created our shadow catcher in the back. So there would be if, if we didn't have the shadow, we could actually create a plane, set that to hold out, which is a shader that just if, if a light ray from the, from the uh, ray tracer hits it, just makes it transparent. But we want our shadow, so if we set it to hold out, we're actually deleting the shadow too. If you're enjoying this tutorial so far, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. It's free for you and it helps me out. Thank you so much. Back to the tutorial. So instead of that, we're gonna use a modifier, the Boolean modifier, to cut away everything we don't want to see. So let's try that. Uh, we're gonna add another object. Shift A, mesh, cube. Scale it up to something really big. Okay, now this is kind of in the way, but I can change that uh, in the object. Where is it? Viewport visibility. I can say, I don't want to see it textured, I just want to see its bounce. So this is that object, big cube. Um, and I'm gonna move that over, GX, so that it's like here, right? So everything inside of this cube, I'm gonna cut away from my pill. That's the idea. So let's select the pill, go to the modifiers. We already have the bevel on here and the solidify. And now we're gonna add another modifier, so search for the boolean modifier. The boolean modifier takes another object and that's gonna be this big cube that we just did. So let's um, select this cube. And that essentially tells Blender now that we create our pill, we solidify it, and then we cut away everything that's inside of this cube. Let's see if that works. So if the pill moves out, you can see this here is the edge of the cube. And as soon as the pill comes outside of the cube, we actually have geometry there, we have mesh, we can see it. And as long as it's over here, it's inside of the cube and the cube cuts away everything inside. So it basically cuts away the entire 
pill. Cool. Now we have a problem. Even though our text is a child of the pill, uh, it's not getting uh, changed by the boolean modifier on the pill because it's still its own object. It's just parented to the pill. And now it becomes a little bit tricky because if we select a text object and we go add modifier and we search for the boolean modifier to do the same thing, there is no boolean modifier. There is no boolean modifier for text objects. Of course, we could convert this now into a mesh object and then it would work. <clears throat> but then we can't edit it anymore. I can still go into this text object and edit it, right? And still edit the text. So I want to keep this text object, but I want to apply this Boolean modifier. Now the funny thing is... Subscribe and activate all notifications so you don't miss the next video.